big things are about to happen. This batch of Xbox news is a complete mixed bag. I'm gonna warn you in advance. We have a brand new studio, which is the opposite of what we've been talking about for like the last week or so. so Interesting. And if it's an Activision studio, I don't know how to feel about that one, Chief. What good has Activision done in its life? Not much, if anything. So hooray for that. We also have news on more Xbox games going over to PlayStation, which if you pay attention to anything Satya Nadella says, you know it's an inevitability, but we have more reports on the inside about that. We have an... Yeah, so most likely the game that's going to PlayStation is going to be Starfield. And I know what you're thinking. Oh my god, PlayStation finally gets to experience the glory of Starfield. Yes, I'm thinking exactly the same. I know, I know PlayStation play uh, exclusively players are probably drooling, drooling over the idea that they are finally going to get to play the absolute master miracle work. That is Starfield. Yeah, I'm sure they are. 100% sure. Update on how Ninja Theory is feeling about the rumors and fear surrounding the studio's potential closure and a non-answer submitted there over on the Kind of Funny Games podcast, which I found interesting enough that I'd want to spotlight it here. And last but not least, Hi-Fi Rush's final update is here, marking the end of that game and likely anytime we ever see Hi-Fi Rush again outside of the inevitable Nintendo Switch port. So we got a lot. To Good riddance, Hi-Fi Rush. Yeah, oh, but it's still more than they expected. Yeah, I did. That's not how business works, sadly. Off you go. To get into today, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you once more for tuning in. Appreciate all the support we've seen across all the channels we're doing. Mr. Matty Plays, Retro Rebound, Retro Rewind. They're all doing super well. I could not be happier. So thank you for just being a part of what we do here, wherever you choose to watch. That's a My Hero Academia shirt. Jesus, who, who, who even reads that? My Hero Academia turned to complete trash so long ago. I mean, it still has a seventh season of, of anime, I think, but damn! ...and spend some time. But first, a word from our sponsor. sponsor. The following video is brought to you by 1v1.lol. As Wall Street Journal reports, Microsoft is planning its boldest games bet yet since the Activision deal changing out Call of Duty is sold. It's in this report mm. that they state that Xbox is planning to put the newest Call of Duty into Game Pass. And I gotta say, I may be wrong on this one, and I'm stunned to be wrong on this one, but it doesn't mean that I think it's a smart call at the end of the day. I've been saying for a while that just given where Xbox is as a business, you can't put Call of Duty into Game Pass. The risk is so high. We what does that mean? What is the magical risk that you are talking about? I have talked about this, okay? Matthew, I'm, I'm sorry, but he's a complete dunce when it, when it comes to anything business related. Again, he, he's screaming off the top of his uh, lungs, Hi-Fi Rush was successful! How can they cancel it? It's so painful. And, and yes, uh, I have extensively talked about putting it on a uh, Game Pass or whatnot. Who knows if it's going to happen? We, uh, there are two speculations why it could happen and why it could not happen. But to know if it's actually reasonable, we need to see their actual Game Pass numbers. And what's the overlap of people who play Call of Duty and the people who use Game Pass. Because if the long story short... If they're going to actually put uh, Call of Duty on Game Pass, that means that they are going to try and do one thing. That means that there are a lot of people who are only playing Call of Duty exclusively. And they don't care about Xbox, Game Pass, or whatever. And that they're going to try and sell the idea that, hey, you don't need to buy Call of Duty. It costs like 100 bucks, but you can buy Game Pass and it's for free, my dude. And then they're going to release it like every year. And effectively, that's going to just work uh, uh, work in a way that all of the Call of, Call of Duty players are going to buy Game Pass. And, well, that's pretty much it. They're going to pay effectively double for Call of Duty. That's how it's going to work. Long story short. We saw how after quarterly releases of major exclusives for Xbox that their revenue didn't really move the needle and in fact were losing money last year if not for the Activision Blizzard acquisition. Now you see there how Call of Duty is a major difference maker 
but you risk tampering with the revenue there because you're about to convince a bunch of people that they'll never need to buy Call of Duty, that they can just subscribe to Game Pass, which could be the big play here. This really is, in my opinion, the do or die moment for Game Pass. Not to say that Game Pass is going to go away completely if this doesn't work out, but there's a lot at stake here if you really look at it critically. I hope it does. Game Pass is a scam for almost all the people who buy it. Again, the average person buys Game Pass, they forget to cancel it, and they maybe play one or two games a year from Game Pass for free. And, well, if you do the math, I'll, I'll simplify it for you. You're losing money. You're just losing money. If you're not playing four-ish games on Game Pass every single year for multiple hours, you're not getting your money's worth. For starters, Xbox has already had a lot of trouble communicating certain things coming to Game Pass and certain things not coming to Game Pass. I look at Blade after the Game Awards as a primary example of that. A lot of confusion surrounding the company, surrounding the move, a lot of people wondering what was going on with that. Imagine that, but times like 20 million because Call of Duty is that big. Not only are they risking tampering with their Golden Goose, which can drastically alter their business, if it pays off though, Game Pass is going to soar to a whole new level, but no doubt it's going to come with a price hike. I don't think you're going to get Call of Duty in Game Pass with the same price that you're paying right now, which still may push people away. It may be too rare. Oh man, didn't, didn't Game Pass already do a price hike a year ago or two years ago or another one? Man, it's it's just too much. It's it's just too much. But again, they have their uh, there there is a mathematical formula for something called in business optimal price point, aka it's the highest price you can get with the highest numbers of people to get higher uh, highest revenue possible. I think this is what they're going for. But the reality is math is not always co correct in finance. Usually it's in fact not correct in finance. Rich for their blood when they don't care about Call of Duty. And I hate to just look at the negative side of things here, but I got to be honest, if this doesn't work out, I just fear for what Xbox has to do next year. This is a company with historically poor communication. And now they're going to have to explain again, if this doesn't work out, how you got Call of Duty and Game Pass one year, but you're not going to get it next year because I think it's a one and done. If this doesn't work out, there's no way it sniffs near Game Pass. Then it calls into question other day one deals. How do you communicate what's going day one in the Game Pass and what's not? Perhaps that's a conversation for another day, but I just look at this as the... He has a point. It is really hot for Xbox at the moment. They bought Activision Blizzard. They bought Bethesda. 80 billion down the drain. What did Bethesda do? Starfield. Everyone hates it, and because of how poorly Starfield is received and everything surrounding it, now and now everything that's happening, even honestly, people don't want to actually, uh, people are not looking forward to Elder Scrolls 6. Starfield has done the irreversible damage, and that called cost 8 mil billion from uh xbox to buy them that's not that's not good and then there's activision blizzard that made diablo 4 which is an absolute catastrophe in its own right well not in its own right it is an absolute catastrophe and with season 4 it it's kind of over the the game's fully dead without redemption of possibilities the big make or break moment for game pass where if it doesn't work out I think it's going to result in serious changes in the Xbox business. I'm not talking layoffs and studio closures. I'm looking at it more of how games are sold. How does Game Pass function? What's the price Game Pass is at? Does it result in another price hike? Do they gouge the current users? Or do they put it in a state where it's like, hey, no more day one Game Pass releases. Let's just focus on sales. I'll be keen to find out where they go with this. But no doubt, as the headline suggests, this is a big play for Xbox. And hopefully for their sake, it pans out. I'm looking forward to seeing the new Call of Duty with the developer direct. No doubt they're going to be focusing on that one where it's reportedly open world. So we'll see where that goes. But we're going to stick with Activision here in our next news story. Activision has opened a brand new studio called Elsewhere, and this is headquartered in Poland. Here's what they write inside their blurb. Activision has formed an all-new internal studio, Elsewhere Entertainment. The new team, headquartered in Warsaw, Poland, with additional resources in the U.S., is exclusively focused on creating a new, narrative-based, and genre-defining AAA franchise. Built from the ground up, Elsewhere Entertainment is a premier and... Oh, 
That sounds interesting. Standalone studio dedicated to establishing an environment that inspires bold and diverse ideas. The team's underlying mission encourages everyone to explore and collaborate creatively to craft a franchise with an enduring legacy that resonates far beyond games. The talented team at Elsewhere Entertainment consists of a collection of storytelling experts whose credits include The Last of Us, Uncharted, The Witcher, Cyberpunk, Destiny, Tom... The Last of Us or The Last of Us 2 are we talking about here, okay? Uncharted, okay. The Witcher, okay. Cyberpunk, okay. Destiny, that's not good. Tom Clancy's Division and Far Cry, not sure about these two. And, well, again, you, you, you can get talent from all these games, but it doesn't mean that the people that uh, worked on these franchises previously were a big deal, a big part of it. Usually when they do announcements like this, they mention the biggest names if they have any, honestly. And, well, they're not doing it, which is sus, to say the least. Tom Clancy's The Division and Far Cry. Maybe a little bit too much Ubisoft there. But anyway, the new studio has full access to Activision's resources and tools as it continues to increase production and development. Elsewhere is opening its search for best-in-class talent from across the industry and around the world to help create a state-of-the-art and next-generation gaming experience. Mm. Before I get into the fun stuff, I will just open this up by saying that I have no doubts in my mind Xbox is going to parade this around as their own W, which it technically is a new Xbox studio. Don't get me wrong there, but this has definitely been long in the works before the acquisition happened. But nonetheless, this is going to be the kind of rebound story to go. Well, yeah, there's a bunch closed down, but we have this new AAA one. Look at this fun thing over here. I wonder if this company shows up at all to reveal what they're working on. Obviously, it's very early days, but since they talked about here on the blog post, Okay, what are the chances that this is an Anthem 2.0? Kind of would be hilarious, wouldn't it? Hiring, what usually helps to draw more talent to a team, especially if there are US resources being utilized here, is that you post a game announcement at a showcase, so then freelance developers or available unemployed developers look at what's happening there and go, oh, hey, that seems pretty cool. I actually want to go work on that and they apply at that place. So I wouldn't be too surprised if Elsewhere did show up with some sort of game announcement. They didn't put any sort of details on the blog post, which is why I'm thinking this may be the case. I think of like, for example, when Blizzard was working on a new IP that's now canceled, unfortunately, that was codenamed Odyssey, they were posting like, hey, this is a survival game. So you attract the right talent because that's part of hiring for a game is people think it's just game developer one size fits all and, and some are that talented but others are really good at making rpgs some are really good at narrative experiences some are really good at puzzle games we don't really know the gameplay experience here for elsewhere's games so i feel like we might see a potential mm. game announcement there i'm not 100 percent on that but it's cool to see a new studio erected within the activision umbrella that isn't working on call of duty and is triple a and is going to get some resources thrown its way that is pretty exciting as someone who's not big on most of Activision's teams. I'm cool with this. This looks good to me, so I'm curious to see how they operate, what they end up making. Again, early days, so we may not see much for a long while beyond an inevitable announcement. Some may ask, does this soften the blow of what happened with nice. four studio closures? I think that it's not really comparable. You still close down four studios and you're not really responsible for opening this one. And when you look at Xbox and the last studio they did open in the initiative, we're hearing rumors that Perfect Dark is looking better thanks to a report by Jeff Grubb. And I'm really excited if that is true because some people are still saying, well, it is rough according to some, but others are saying it's gonna come together. So I don't know if this is a clash between optimism and pessimism but we're also hearing that it may be at the summer showcase i think if xbox is looking to fight back against the current narrative you've got to put a lot of concern to rest and i think there are particular games that are targeted with that perfect dark i don't think xbox is gonna find uh, try to fight any kind of narrative honestly the the fact that people just automatically assume Oh, oh, studio shutting down, developers getting fired, very bad. And yet, you know, you have, and there's no dealing with this, right? When, because why am I saying this? Because you have literally people like Yongya, yeah, who represent an actually significant chunk of, uh, of gamers. And in the same fucking autistic breath, he can say, Oh, developers should not be fired, that's bad. And... So reduce game game budget sizes stop the bluff bro if you want to uh, if you want to cut down the 
<laughs> if you want to cut down the goddamn expenses, you're going to be firing people. That's what you're asking. When you want to cut down the budget of a game, you're literally saying fire people. And yet, firing people is bad. It, 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 there's no winning against this. I don't think Xbox is even going to honestly try and do anything against, uh, against these narratives because what can they do? They can't educate people. They can't just magically educate all of the people who, you know, think Young yeah, has even two brain cells. Dark being one, State of Decay 3 being another. I think you put to rest something like giving Fable a window. I think you put something to rest like doing something with Gears of War in a meaningful way, like a collection, which I know you can't just- Don't know what's gonna happen with Gears of War, but we already know how, you know, the Xbox lineup and, you know, Bethesda lineup is looking in the, in the upcoming year. And it's bad. Most of their games, well, pretty much all of their games, are gonna be disasters. No questions asked. Fable is woke. Hellblade 2 is woke. And not woke in the minor senses, woke in the worst senses possible. You know, Indiana Jones looks like absolute trash and probably plays even worse. Starfield Shattered Space. The, for, I'm sorry I even mention it. Just whip up, so if it's not ready, then that's not going to happen. And I think something from elsewhere, like pointing to a new studio. I'm not trying to do damage control for them, but if I'm in the building and I'm looking at the reaction to my company, I'm going to target things that likely people are thinking about me and try to right those wrongs by letting products speak for themselves. So Perfect Dark is a pretty easy target as we've covered in the past because of the developers leaving the studio. We just read recently that a journalist from Video Game Chronicle is like sitting on an expose of the team again. Uh, so it's messy there. Can we let the game speak for ourselves? I wonder if Xbox is approaching the showcase with this in mind. We'll see. What they definitely are approaching the showcase with in mind is PlayStation. We have reports, we have insiders. People are saying more Xbox games are coming to PlayStation. This may not be news to many because if you pay close attention to the Xbox ecosystem, Satya Nadella has made it very clear that he wants more Xbox games on PlayStation. He's definitely helping call a lot of the shots for Xbox. And also I think just us using our brains helps a lot here. There's no way in hell, especially after all the lies we've seen that I'm gonna believe Phil, Sarah, and Matt going, we're going to just try these four games and that'll be it for a while. There are way... Wait, so Phil Spencer is a liar. Booty is also probably a liar. But Todd Howard, that man is just spitting gold. Is that what I'm supposed to get here? More in the plans. There was just way too much leaked. But also, it just makes so much sense because there's rationale for either side of the story. If these games that they put on PlayStation from Xbox flop... You have more of a reason to go dig deeper into your catalog and pick some heavy hitters. If they succeed, now you're going to go make more money. So either way, the rationale was there. And when you had Satya kind of pushing that initiative and also the desire to, quote, reach more gamers because games are getting more expensive. And it's certainly the idea of just daring to try to make our games smaller wouldn't help. We have to go just try to sell them on a million platforms for me. I think it's something that has been written on the wall clearly and i'm cool with it i like games and i want more people to experience them and i think this is where a lot of companies are going to go just some slower than others but definitely xbox taking the first step well ahead of time from what we expected and now we have insider nate drake saying i was strictly talking about starfield there in a response to this original post i've heard of other games coming to ps5 and they could be during the holiday season this year but working to confirm the games and the release windows Meanwhile, over on Windows Central Gaming, Jez Corden has a report that writes here, The plan to move Xbox games to other platforms is codenamed Latitude internally. And I know there's a debate and unease at Microsoft about whether- How creative! Latitude! Holy! Wow! Ah, oh, I bet someone felt really smart about uh, this one. Whether or not this is a good idea. More upcoming Microsoft-owned games slated for PlayStation are already being developed, at least for now. It's kind of really uh, hard to say what's happening here. Obviously, there was the whole FCC thing. Maybe this has something to do with that. Because, well, Microsoft obviously wants to acquire the whole world. Duh. And, you know, they, they if, if some kind of FCCs are trying to uh, prevent them from doing that, you know, they're, they're probably going to try to soften the blow. Uh, then it, this could be the fact that Xbox is afraid of PlayStation taking over. We talked about this. 
PlayStation, I, I predicted this two years ago, the PlayStation, not even two years ago, was it three or four when the Xbox One, uh, Xbox X or Xbox One came out or whatever it's called. We looked at the sales and the fact that play, uh, Xbox has absolutely nothing happening in Japan is, is bad. This could be just the fact that Xbox understands that they are going to slowly get pushed out of the market more by PlayStation because their growth rate is going to surpass them. So they're just effectively just trying to uh, capitalize off the fact that their opponents are bigger. That could be a thing. Uh, then, then there's the completely nonsensical part of this equation, and that is the fact that Xbox is afraid that PlayStation is going to win the console war. But then again, not even a year ago, we had PlayStation uh, doing a random shit that didn't make sense because they were afraid that Xbox is winning the console war. <laughs> On each side, you, you still have, by the way, uh, the other side thinking that they're losing. Xbox thinks they're losing, PlayStation still thinks they're losing. What is actually happening, hard to tell. We just know that PlayStation does have a, a higher amount of players. And they have more games. That is currently kind of just it. They're potentially obvious games you'd most likely expect. And yes, while it's true, Microsoft is a prolific publisher on PlayStation already. It is typically revolved around specific franchises like Minecraft. From what I've heard, Microsoft is pushing for a no red line for what games could come to PlayStation. And it all revolves around Satya Nadella and CFO Amy Hood's mandate to increase every department's margins. Jez followed up on his Twitter account saying there's no confirmation yet whether or not there is a true red line and just that this is what Satya wants, which again, as I've said earlier, he's been not very shy about and Jez says as much here. This is an interesting one because this situation moves so fast when you really look at it. We started at the top of the year with this thought process of eventually Xbox games will come to PlayStation and Switch, but it'll be this curated version of Game Pass. Then they were selling them a la carte. That became a huge problem. People quickly adjusted to the idea of, okay, after a certain amount of time, certain Xbox games are going to arrive on PlayStation and Switch. And now we're moving to the next part of this story that I think is going to be, they're coming quicker and quicker. Like I'm thinking Starfield is going to be on this list. If you have Starfield, which didn't really move the needle for Xbox, I think you quickly want to move it over to PlayStation. You move it on over there with the new expansion, with all the patches and the updates that have been coming out for the last year by the time the expansion drops. And boom, now you got yourself a really good version. And boom, what? Version of Starfield available day and date on PlayStation. It's an easy sell. A really good version of Starfield. I'm sorry, no amount of updates are going to change the fact that Starfield is a glorified fucking dumpster fu uh, fire. That's it. That That's the reality. And the logic still exists that if you're going to keep Game Pass around, that you can kind of help pseudo market it by saying you either go ahead and pay $70 for it or you come over to Game Pass. That's been the logic for a while though. That hasn't moved the needle as stats have shown. So yeah, this is just a move to get more money into Xbox and Microsoft's pockets. It does create the awkward conversation of definitive editions of Xbox games being on PlayStation. I think that'll fade away more and more as they inevitably just move to being fully multi-plat and start launching big exclusive. I have no idea what's a definitive edition even. Exclusives or things that we thought would be exclusive, day and date on PlayStation Switch, as well as Xbox. We have an interesting interview here that was conducted by Kind of Funny Games. They talked to the studio head of Ninja Theory and they asked a tough question. They said, how are you feeling as a studio? There's a lot of rumors and fear about your future. And I want you all to hear for yourselves, just to make sure I'm not crazy, hear for yourselves what he had to say about the studio's future and how he he dodges the question big time. I, uh, our team are feeling really good about the game. You know, I feel super proud of it. Like making games is really, really hard. And uh, yes. it takes a lot uh, out of people. It's, it's, it's a really hard thing. And I think it's a really brave thing as well, you know, to, to just like you guys, right? You, you're putting yourselves out there and you're putting your, 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 your art and your creative out there. And we're, we're doing the same thing. And, you know, my job, like I say, is to make the very, very best games that we can. You know, we have a pretty small team here. We're a close team and we're just excited about getting our work out there to, sure. to fans, you know, fans of Hellblade, fans of games like Hellblade. So, you know, that that's... Oh, really... this is the Hellblade studio. Yeah, they're fucked. <laughs> Hellblade is uh, gonna be shit, boy. It's gonna be really bad. Be the focus. So the vibe here is, is 
good. Like we feel confident and proud of the game that we've made. Look, I don't know if there was really a good answer he could have gave. You can't go, man, that's a real shame what Microsoft did. They're kind of funding you. Don't want to rub them the wrong way, I imagine, right? Especially when you're seeing them shuttering studios. Maybe you want to just chill with all of that. At the same time, you can't confidently sit here and go, well, you know, we're going to be fine. We're not going anywhere. We're in a really interesting time in our industry where studios that are performing well are shutting down. Studios that are not performing well are shutting down. Like it makes no sense sometimes. We're becoming numb to the reality of it happening so often. It is true that the best approach you can have in this sort of situation is, let me just put my head down, focus on my work and hope for the best. They say in this interview as well that part of the lack of the marketing is hoping that the game will just speak for itself. It's a pretty big bet on a company yeah, that's a pretty shitty bet. I think they're just kind of trying to avoid this because they already know that people are going to call Hellblade Vogue. Because it is. Shit looks complete, co completely backwards, okay? And, yeah, the more, the more marketing you put into something like that, the more people are just going to laugh at you and make fun of you for, you know, being bad company you bought back in 2018 and you launched the announcement of your console alongside this game and now you're just gonna let it fight for itself in game pass with all of this negative press that's your answer that's the solution from the studio proposed i again i may just have a more skeptical eye than ever before people are going to interpret that as negativity but the reality is i think this game is being set up for failure whether or not it actually fails mm. is a totally different story but i do think the game is being set up to be put in an awkward position and i don't know if this is deliberate or not but his answer to me wasn't very reassuring but in fairness i don't know what answer he could have given to really settle people down with the yeah this is not getting involved. this concern because yeah when you see a company like tango after hi-fi rush get shut down the thought process very much likely is even if he says the vibe is good there uh, yeah, we're about to put out maybe a banger too, and that's not going to matter potentially with how Microsoft is acting lately. So we'll see, but Hellblade's due out next week. We'll be talking about it extensively. Looking for Yay, Hellblade. I can't wait for forward it. To that. Let's take a look at our last update for Hi-Fi Rush to round things out here. They post on their Twitter account. Check out the changes in our final update. Thanks for all your support and keep on rocking. And here in the patch notes, you're going to see that it's nothing really significant. It's not about the update here I'm going to track. Uh, it's just that this is it. This is the end of Hi-Fi Rush. And none of these patches are going to Xbox anyway. As you see, it's all PlayStation and PC. And it's just sad. It's sad because this really isn't it for Twisting the Knife. Like, this was one rotation. The full rotation, I think, comes with the Switch port announcement where it's going to find a new audience. I still am a strong believer that Hi-Fi Rush is going to do well on Switch. I don't know if it's going to blow up on Switch, but I think it's going to do well on Switch. Eh, it looks like a Switch game, honestly. So, I mean, it, that's, that's fine. Switch. And I think Xbox is again going to have that moment of wishing they had this company around to continue this series. I think this was a series that you... Oh my god, we talked about this. The people who... From, that talent just doesn't get yeeted and deleted, okay? All the talent that they had in Hi-Fi Rush just got relocated to other places where they can actually be useful, not create something that, sh that is niche and almost no one actually plays. You built around as a prestige piece that really brought in new developers into the industry because it's fun, it's creative, it's different, it's from first party, creates a really good image for your brand. There are so many reasons, as we already know, to keep Tango around. I know for many, they were underperforming studio that finally found their way with Hi-Fi Rush, maybe a little too late. I think it's a fair synopsis just because when you look at from the track between Evil Within 1 and Ghostwire Tokyo, really the Evil Within 1, to our knowledge, did pretty okay, but otherwise they haven't had a major success. So I can understand looking at it with a critical eye and just going, ah, you know what, like maybe they had it coming, but at the end of the day with Microsoft's resources, I think this was one worth keeping around, especially with the buzz they created. We also have Redfall's final update. Oh, and I have boy. to admit, this is at least a good thing to see. Not the fact that the studio's closed, but just the update in general. They the fact that the people who made uh, Redfall, <laughs> Vogfall, is pretty good. They say we are working to release our final... Man, the, the ESG shit is, by the way, getting heavy, and it's uh, getting out of hand. There's actually a lot of stuff on Twitter being leaked about how much ESG actually plays a part in here. I know there are people who don't believe in the Vogue and think that that's all bullshit, but man... Again, just 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 check it out a little bit. What's leaking from uh, places like Activision, Blizzard, and whatnot? How their ESG literally is dictating what is in games and what can't be in games. It's the most creativity killing thing ever.
update for Redfall, game update for that brings a revamp. Well, I guess I don't care about Redfall. Anyone knows that Starfield Redfall updates are absolute bull. Anyway, that was it, Mr. Matty Place. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and thought anything. Have a nice day. Bye bye.